As you may or may not know, I'm going about making my 4X scale open RCF1 car, hopefully getting it to Murph, and I'm running into some issues. One of the issues is fasteners, like nuts and screws and bolts and all sorts of cool stuff like that. I've got a 4X scale open RC car, and you can't just take an M3 screw and magically inflate the steel. So I either need to find larger screws and nuts and bolts, or I take the M3 screws and the M3 nuts and I just 4X scale them using 3D printing. There's a super easy way to do that. And uh, I'm gonna show you. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. This episode of 3D Printing Nerd is sponsored by Matter Hackers. You've always been able to do what I'm going to tell you about before. It just took a few extra steps. In fact, Dave over at Matter Hackers put together this article three years 2015 oh my good wait march 25th 2015 it's 2018 so three years three years ago this article talks about getting nuts and bolts and such from the mcmaster car digital catalog bringing it in converting it to something that's an stl and then printing it well that's great uh but thanks to autodesk fusion 360 while the Matter Hackers article is still valid, there is an easier way. And I think once I make this video, I think Dave might update the article. So here we go, Dave, just for you. First, open up Autodesk Fusion 360. Uh, I'm not gonna go through any sort of tutorials on how to use it per se, except for this one. Go to Insert, scroll down to Insert McMaster Car Component. And this brings up this window. And the first trick I'm gonna give you well, it's awesome. Use your mouse and make the window bigger. Oh, it just feels better that way. It's awesome. Okay, so I need to find M3 screws and then I need to size them up. So I'm gonna choose screws and bolts right here. It's a flathead screw, so I'm gonna choose that one. Over here, I'm gonna go metric. I'm gonna scroll my mouse to see M3. And I'm gonna pick, I believe it was eight. I know I needed the eight millimeters. Well, here we go, okay. These look great. I'm gonna pick the metric alloy steel hex drive flats. No, 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 wait. Wait a second. Since I'm gonna be 3D printing this, I need to take into consideration how I'm going to twist the screw in. And this is uh, a hex head, a hex head. So usually you put a hex key on there and turn it. But when you're 3D printing, uh, you're, <laughs> the angle is isn't very sharp and so you have a bigger chance of the tool slipping so find yourself a phillips head screw or a flat head screw because then it's a larger surface area that can be easily twisted once it's enlarged and if i'm not using all the words forgive me but you get the idea so i picked the phillips head screw Passive 18 aid black oxide. It doesn't matter because we're not doing the metal. You just need to click this number over here and Then product detail. It's got a, a tiny little crosshair and it says CAD so click on it It brings up this new screen and once you scroll down You're presented with this and it has all of these different formats including SolidWorks or step choose uh, 3d SolidWorks or 3d step hit save and there it is. This is the model of an M3 10 millimeter screw. I'm gonna hit okay, and I'm in fusion, and I'm just rotating it around. Look at that, oh, look at that, I'm, I'm unscrewing. <laughs> Whatever. All right, well, we got it in there. Now what you wanna do is export it as an STL. So just, or it says unsaved here because we didn't start a new component, we didn't save anything. Just hit the right mouse button and choose save as STL. Make sure it's set to binary, refinement high. You're not outputting to a 3D print utility and click okay. And then it's going to save it out here. I've already done this before, as you can tell. What do you need to do at this point? Well, you bring up your slicer. I'm gonna bring up Cura because I'm gonna print this on the Ultimaker 3. I'm gonna hit open file and I'm gonna choose that M3 10 millimeter Phillips STL and there it is. Look at that, it is so, so tiny. To print this, we need to make sure it's oriented correctly. So let's choose this, let's rotate it. And, oh, scroll, come on, I'm gonna back up. You know, going between Fusion 
and a slicer, it just messes with your brain. All right, here we go. So I want to rotate that this way. So I'm going to go 180 degrees because I just need to flip it upside down. Once it's upside down, scale. And I'm going to go 400% because it's 4x. I'm going to do it on all axes. All right. I could just choose uniform scaling. That would work as well. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, if you choose it after the fact, you're in trouble. So let's just do 400. And I'm going to turn that on and see what happens. Good. Okay, good. See? Look at that. We're learning new things every day. I'm going to click the move just in case I accidentally hit something. There it is. As you can see, it's a lot bigger. In fact, it's 4x scale. When I go over here to scale, it shows 400% increase in X and Y and Z, and it's fantastic. But when you print this out, you may run into issues. The problem you run into is, well, it's one of the things we have to deal with with 3D printing. It's the clearance. It's the clearance between part A and part B, and it's your printer's tolerance on whether or not it can print an accurate clearance. I think that's what Angus over at Makers Me has told me. So here is this screw. This is the exact one I just showed you. It's 400% on X, on Y, and on Z. And when I attach it to the nut, it doesn't go in easily. And that's because we're not playing with metal part tolerances and clearances. We're playing with plastic pieces. So what do you do? You go back into your slicer and you uncheck uniform scaling if you've checked it and you start backing off the X and the Y. There we go. And just like that, I've changed X and Y to be 375% with Z being 400%. And that's because we still need the height of the screw. We don't want to change the height, but we just want to change how wide and how deep it is, depending on the orientation. So what you end up with is a screw like this. And here is the nut. You put it in. Wait, there we go. And it twists and it turns and it's perfect. And it's, it's not too tight. It moves great. And I found that at 375% on the X and the Y, it well, it works. Plus, in that article I talked about, Dave over at Matter Hackers, he did talk about that exact thing and how if uh, you can either size up the female receiving part or you can size down the male or the inserting part. And usually you want to play with, I believe it said 2 to 5% scale on the X and the Y. That seems like great advice. Thank you for that, Dave. And don't forget, once you've found the right settings for your printer and the nut and the bolt and the, the screw and the whatever you're printing, just, just print a whole bunch of them. The goal is the OpenRC is going to be as 3D printed as possible. There are some screws that have to embed threads into the plastic. And I don't think those can be... 3D printed, and I, I still have some experiments to do, but if I'm gonna get this to Murph, I really have to finish up. All right, that was just really quick, and I really hope that was valuable. I think being able to access the McMaster Car catalog digitally in Fusion 360 is a fantastic step towards the future, where we just say, hey, I need a screw, and I need these settings, and I wanna print it at home. I just showed you how to do that. It took a little bit of search, but it's easier than it was three years ago. And in the next 12 to 18 months, it's going to be even easier still. So don't forget that. Hey, if you like what I do on this channel, please click a link down in the description. There's a bunch down there. Tickling any of those supports the channel. I appreciate it. Beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.